So we can finally talk about it. AMD's brand new CPUs, their best version of x86 they currently have to offer. And right now there's two SKUs available. You have the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370, which I have here in the ASUS ZenBook S16. And there's also an H365 processor available as well. The main difference obviously comes down to processor speed and the RX 890M is inside of the 370 version compared to the 880M, which has a few less CPU cores. Now, this is not a massive performance update. Like it's not gonna blow everything we have on the market away. But what it really is for AMD is a power and efficiency play for their x86 architecture. Like I ran a lot of tests on these guys and single core clock speeds are finally in line with the competition. It matches the Intel Meteor Lake processors that are currently available. Multi-core speeds are significantly faster. In fact, they're so good because they're tying the Core Ultra 9 with using significantly less power. And then you have stuff like Mozilla Firefox. It came in second place based on the laptops that I put it up against. The other thing to take into consideration is creative work. In Photoshop, it excelled very well. It came in second place right after the MacBook, but the one area where it kind of falls short is Premiere Pro. I find that MacBooks and then Intel integrated GPUs do a little bit better of a job in terms of performance compared to the Radeon GPUs that are currently available. But the crazy thing is these new processors are able to do all of this at like 28 watts. Like, don't get me wrong, it's gonna boost up when it has the option, but at the end of the day, it's giving you the exact same performance as an Intel Core Ultra 9 while doing it at half the power. And that's really impressive. Is it MacBook Air impressive? No. Is it Snapdragon X Elite impressive? No, but for X86, it's actually really good. The only area where I was kind of disappointed was to see the core clock average speeds. I feel like they could be pushed up a little bit higher. They did perform a little low compared to other laptops that are currently on the market. And the unfortunate part is that the fan noise is still pretty loud. Like if you put this on performance mode or full fan mode, it's gonna sit in the 50s if you're like ridiculously pushing the CPU. If you put it on balanced or whisper mode, the fan noise goes below 40. But the everyday like regular use, the fans do kick on, but not as often as like most Intel laptops. It's definitely a quieter experience, but it's not MacBook or Snapdragon X Elite quiet. But the one area where I was kind of disappointed was with the GPU performance, because this new RX 890M is supposed to be the next generation for AMD. And yes, it's better in terms of overall efficiency, so you'll probably get better battery life if this thing is going into future Windows gaming handhelds. But in terms of performance, I didn't see a difference. Like it's neck and neck with the AMD Z1 Extreme or the RX 780M. Of course, I tested a bunch of games compared to the ASUS ROG Ally X and the performance was mostly the same, sometimes a little bit worse, which it should be because the ASUS ROG Ally games tested were done at 1080p because of the aspect ratio. And this was done at 1920 by 1200. I really was hoping for a nice performance boost which tells me that the next generation of gaming handhelds, unless AMD has something else up their sleeve, will have better battery life, but don't expect a performance boost to go with it. As for the laptop, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous laptop. Like this is one of my favorite looking ASUS laptops you can buy right now. This lid just looks absolutely incredible. It's using a special sort of ceramic material. It's a very specific process to have this thing made. I'm digging this like whiter gray color. It's very unique compared to anything else that's out there on the market. Yes, there's a bit of a two-tone finish because the bottom portion is more of a silver color, whereas the top is like a grayish white. Really thin, very light at three point. 31 pounds, a good amount of IO. So on the left-hand side, you have your HDMI 2.1 port. You get two USB 4.0 ports. These run at 40 gigabits per second. Combo headphone jack. And then on the other side, you have a full-size SD card slot and a 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 port. Opening up is super easy. There's a little ledge over here to put your finger inside. And what you get is this beautiful, beautiful keyboard deck. The touchpad on this guy is absolutely 
massive. It's a bit of a dive board. You're gonna feel the depth to it when you click on it. Obviously not as nice as a haptic touchpad, but very good for a glass one. Sticker placement is kind of weird, you know, like this is the AMD sticker guy. You think he'd put a little bit more appreciation into lining up the stickers, but they're just all over the place. It looks like the leading tower of pizza, but the typing experience is phenomenal. The keys are nice and clicky. They're big enough. They're spaced well. Yes, you could argue they could have put a numeric keypad, but then it would just make the keyboard look cramp. I think this just looks a lot cleaner. For those of you curious to see what the backlighting looks like, it's kind of hard to see since it is a white keyboard and obviously you'll see it more at night, but during the day, it's definitely not as noticeable compared to a darker one. You do get the co-pilot key over here. There's no fingerprint scanner to log you on, but you do have Windows Hello facial recognition. So this is what the 1080p webcam looks like. I'm using nothing but natural lighting around me. There's a couple of windows over here. You guys let me know how it looks and let me know how the microphone sound. Now I just wanna to touch on AI a little bit because obviously AMD is advertising that and this can do 50 tops using the NPU. I think a total of 81 if you put everything together. It doesn't mean much right now. Like it's great if you're doing a video call, that'll all be pushed to the NPU, which will save you battery life and reduce the fan noise. But I mean, like you hit the co-pilot key, it's still being run in the cloud. There's a couple of apps like Amuse that AMD advertises that can do generative images. But besides that, I think we're far away from like really getting into the nitty gritty of what these MPUs can do. The display though, absolutely beautiful. It's an OLED display. It's touch. You can buy a pen that works with it. I don't know if I would though, just because this can't lie completely flat. Like this is the furthest it goes back. And I imagine taking notes like this is probably quite awkward, but the display is touch. And what you get with that is an OLED panel behind a glossy screen. And watching content on this looks absolutely stunning. Now the sound quality on this laptop is fantastic. I have two different sources here for the materials. One of them says it has six speakers. The other one says they have four. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be comparing it to the MacBook Air 15. You guys let me know which one sounds better. Now the internals, I only see four speakers, so I'm personally gonna go with four unless they're hidden somewhere on the other side of the motherboard. But what you do have is a really big 78 watt hour battery. Now this is one area where I was expecting more. Like I only got 11 hours and 47 minutes on my modern office battery life test. Not the best score. There are some Intel laptops that beat it out, but I find that test is not really representative of real life. I did find the battery life to be better than Meteor Lake, but not as good as the Snapdragon X Elite or obviously the MacBook Air. Unfortunately, there's only one drive slot. I would have loved to see a second one considering the size of this laptop. You can swap it out for something bigger, but the read and write speeds are pretty good. RAM is obviously soldered onto the motherboard. And finally, the Wi-Fi card is soldered onto the motherboard, but it is Wi-Fi 7. So to wrap things up, AMD has done a good job of making x86 more power efficient. They're able to offer you a CPU that gives you the exact same performance as an Intel Core Ultra 9, but with significantly less power. The GPU update was great for efficiency, but not so much for performance. And that leaves me kind of disappointed. If I had to rank this laptop in terms of efficiency, I would still rank the MacBook Air, Snapdragon X Elite laptops at the top. And then I would place this laptop with all the Intel laptops below. But Lunar Lake is not out yet, so there's still more to come towards the end of the year. But if you want the best of x86 right now, this is definitely it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.